Welcome to Geography with Melissa Barron and today we're going to be looking at the Rivers and Coasts Unit for Geography GCSE and by the end of this video you're going to be able to explain the formation of coastal features. Uh, specifically we're going to be looking at the case study for Dirdle Door but we will be going through some other coastal features as well. So first of all, Dirdle Door. For uh, level 3 answer you're going to need a very detailed description of the location. So as you can see in the first map, we have a map of the UK and an arrow pointed to the south coast. So we first of all have to say it's in the UK and it's on the south coast. We then have a map of Dorset, which is a county in the south coast, uh, just below Wiltshire. And it's a coastal area, so there's lots of geographical features going on around the coast. It's a really important area for geography and for your GCSEs. The next picture is showing Dirdle Door in a bit more detail. It's an ordnance survey map, so it shows lots and lots of detail, and you can use perhaps this uh, just to help you explain where the location is. It's near West Lulworth and Weymouth, which is probably the largest uh, town to, uh, to, to Dirdle Door, which is actually quite a small area on the coast, although it's very significant in geographical terms. So what is it? Well, here's a picture, and there's a nice picture of me in the background of Dirtle Door. It's a coastal feature that's been created over many years of the erosive power of waves. And as you can see, it's kind of changed the shape of the coastline. Uh, if you have a look at the descriptions there, we have um, nearest to me the easily eroded rocks, such as the green sands and uh, the chalk which is going to be, the wave action is going to take them away a lot earlier. And then a bit closer to the door itself, we have the softer layers of limestone. Now they're going to be slightly harder, therefore they're going to take a longer time to erode. If you move further away from uh, the soft layers of limestone, you can see Portland Limestone Arch. It's got lots of specific detail there. For a top level answer, you're going to have to include that type of detail. So when you come around to revising, just try to find a way of uh, remembering these little pieces that are going to really help push it up to level 3. And the arch itself is made out of Portland limestone, which is a lot harder than the other rocks around there. And as you can see, it's created this arch and a bit of a headland which pokes out into the bay. So this is the, the rock that's resisted the erosion over the years the most. However, you can see that part of it has eroded and that's what's created it's, uh, the arch there, which it's so famous for. Okay, so how are they formed? Well, actually, the process doesn't finish with the arch. You can see that there's actually quite a lot going on. So we start off with uh, the power of the wave, which is going to erode the rock in uh, several different ways. Mainly, what we're looking at, if you can have a look at this diagram, um, a large crack opens up by hydraulic action, and that's where the energy of the wave is pushing uh, compressed air into small cracks inside the rock. That compressed air is eventually going to widen and break and weaken the rock and eventually the crack grows into a cave. So hydraulic action and abrasion, another form of erosion. So abrasion is where uh, it's happening under the ocean and the waves are throwing up uh, some of the eroded rock and breaking away the rock even further still. Just after that the cave becomes larger so the, all the erosion that's going on is gradually getting larger and larger and eventually you end up with uh, the, cave, the waves break through the headland and it forms this natural arch. I wouldn't like to be standing on the top in between where that arch is because eventually the arch is going to collapse. So the wave action is going to create this uh, undercut in the edge of the cliff and it's going to fall down. So you can see the direction of the cliff retreat and uh, stage six what you end up with is a tall rock stack, which itself is going to be eroded down eventually to a stump. Now what I'd like you to do now is just to have a good look at this picture, and if you can pause the video, I'd like you to draw and label a series of diagrams to explain how a stack is formed. So if you pause the video now, have a go at doing that, and see how you get on. Right, how did you get on? Hopefully your diagram should have the seven stages and it should look something like this. Let's hope it did. Practice that diagram because it's going to really help you when you come out to do the GCSEs. Okay, so the key points, you need a location, it needs to be place specific, 
You need to talk about the ge geological features. You can use a diagram to do this, but I'd practice writing down the geological features and some really uh, lots of detail about the area as well, some facts and some figures. And eventually you're going to have to talk about what happens in the future. So the formation, how is it formed, and what it's going to look like. Again, you can use a diagram to do this, but you need to practice writing it out in full uh, just so that you don't miss any of the, the different marks that you're going to get uh, for a level three. Now, you do need to find out also other coastal features, and Dorset is, a, is an excellent area for this because it has such a dynamic coastline and it can show us so many different places. And this is a diagram of a formation of a cove. This is Logworth Cove. It's in the same area, which is right next to, well, this isn't Logworth Cove, but this is a diagram of how a cove forms. Logworth Cove is right next to Durdle Door. Um, and again, I'm just going to ask you a quick question. I want you to have a look at this picture. It tells you the different types of rock there are. And I want you to tell me which, is, which rock is the least resistant and which is the most resistant. So if you pause now, and then we'll go through the answers. Okay, how well do you think you did? So let's have a look. Uh, it's quite difficult to see the colours here, but Portland limestone is the red layer. Now you know that's the hardest layer because that's what Dirtle Door is made out of. So that's going to take a long time to erode, but when it does, eventually, it's sometimes helped by a river coming off from the land, you'll, it'll end up very quickly eroding the perfect limestone, the clays, the green sand and the chalk behind that. So they're going to erode a lot quicker and that's why you end up with this bay shape. So you have a narrow entry because the rock's very resistant to erosion and then uh, behind that it starts eroding very, very quickly. You end up with the bay shape. We need to understand also depositional features. Now here's three features I want you to, to have a look at and we're going to focus on them and they're very important for, for lots of reasons. So first of all, we have a tombola, and then a bar, which is going to create a lagoon behind, and then a spit. This is a simplified diagram. We're going to look at some more detailed diagrams also. So first of all, you need to understand how they're formed, and that's by longshore drift. And longshore drift is a process of wave action and prevailing winds moving material from the beach from one end to the other. You can see the arrows on this diagram are showing the prevailing winds, which are always blowing in the southwesterly direction or mainly a southwesterly direction on the south coast. And you can see how it's moving material up and down the beach in this action. So the waves are, are, are swashing up the beach and they're going to move the material diagonally from A to B. And then the backwash is going to pull it back down in straight motion to C. This continues over and over again until you end up with these features along here. So this is material that's been moved from one part of a beach to another. So the formation of a spit. As you can see there, you've got information showing you the uh, longshore drift in action and how it eventually creates this bar of sand which will slowly, slowly build up over time and it, it will move in the direction of uh, a, a river mouth, the prevailing winds, and it's quite a dynamic area, it can change uh, over time. Um, it's all by longshore drift as well, so as long as you can remember that these depositional landforms, they're depositing bits of material from the beach, then you should be okay when answering questions. Next we have the Tombola. Here's a, a nice uh, satellite image of uh, the Isle of Portland. It's next to Weymouth, which if you remember when we look back at the diagram of Durdle Door, it was just to the west of Durdle Door. So again, lots of really interesting coastal features in this particular area. And this is where a, a spit has uh, travelled so far or developed so much that it's joined up with another part of land or joined up with an island. So Chesil Beach has been created, which again has created the lagoon behind it, and it's joined up with Portland to create this tombolo. Um, now, the lagoon has been formed, uh, the sandbar has formed across this, this small gap, this bay here, and what's happened is it's created a freshwater lagoon behind there. This is the formation of uh, Slapton Sands, which is in Devon, 
Uh, so not quite the same area, but just a little bit further west. And again, you see we still have this dynamic coastline, which keeps changing. And it's actually, as you can see from this one, a road has been built from one end to the other. So it's being used by humans. It's a, a useful place to have a settlement in many different ways. Um, for an exam question, you might be asked to find this on a, an OS map, an Ordnance Survey map. So you need to be able to look at photographs and be able to translate them to a map. And I'm going to give you an opportunity to do that now. So if we have a look, if we study this map extract, see if you can identify the coastal feature shown out of those three. So which one is it? You're absolutely right, it's Slapton Sands. So you can see that it has the freshwater lagoon behind and you have the bar cutting off uh, or joining one part of land to the other. So let's just go over that again. The key points, we have location. It needs to be place specific. Uh, the features, the geology of the area, how old the rocks are, uh, some facts and figures about the size perhaps of Durdle Door, the formation and the future of this coastal process. You need to talk about how erosion is going to change it. And finally, it's good to practice identifying coastal features uh, on an OS map. It's really worth practicing and also practicing making accurate diagrams. You will also have to be able to describe in words what you're writing to just to make sure that you nail that level three and you get the full marks. Good luck and I'll see you soon.